API 571 damage mechanism and corrosion terms and definitions introduction in this module the following topics shall be covered as per API 510 publication effective sheet for API recommended practice 571 damage mechanism affecting fixed equipment in the refining industry third edition March 2022 section 2 definitions and then there are a dozen of damage mechanisms that we shall discuss such as brittle fracture caustic corrosion chloride stress corrosion cracking corrosion under insulation erosion corrosion hydrochloric acid corrosion sour water corrosion sulfidation and wet h2s damage we have made also a concise version of these chapters and highlighted potential questions but first let's have an overall view of the corrosion problem within refining industry this is just to familiarize yourself with various types of corrosion so don't be alarmed we have highlighted the potential questions corrosion is a major source of ex expense in refinery and chemical plants many times a piece of equipment will corrode its way into retirement as opposed to simply bearing out Crude oil contains salt, which can never be totally removed. So the salt will generate various chemical compounds when broken down in, in a processing system. Some of the compounds are hydrogen chloride, organic and inorganic chlorides. Elements like magnesium and calcium chloride, when dissolved in water and heated, attack the metal in the form of hydrochloric acid, which is very corrosive. This process is called hydrolysis. Hydrogen sulfide is believed to be the most active of the sulfur compounds in causing corrosion. Some hydrogen sulfide is present in the crude oil and more may be generated during the refining process. Hydrogen sulfide also causes blistering and embrittlement. Carbon dioxide, when combined with water, is corrosive. Water and carbon dioxide combine to form carbonic acid. Water will usually be introduced from two sources. The decomposition of bicarbonates in the crude oil or added to crude oil or the water comes from the steam that is used to help distillation of crude oil. Organic acids, while not very corrosive at low temperature, can be very corrosive at their boiling temperature. When organic acids have corroded carbon steel, a very smooth surface is left and metal loss is not readily apparent during visual inspection. Caustic is used primarily for neutralization of acid and grease manufacture. Caustic can be used and stored in carbon steel vessel and is generally not corrosive as long as the vessel has been stress relieved and temperatures are kept at a safe level. At temperature above 200 degrees Fahrenheit, it will cause general corrosion in carbon steel. The stress corrosion cracking is the spontaneous cracking of metals under the combined action of stress and corrosion. Erosion of metals is frequently found in vessels and piping or refineries and chemical plants. It wears away the metal by the abrasive action of a moving stream of a liquid or gas. If solids are contained in the gas or liquid, the erosion will be accelerated and could be compared to blasting with a water and sand mixture. The effect of high temperature on the strength reduction of a metal can result in sudden failure of the metal called stress rupture or slowly called creep. So creep is high temperature and stress. Creep happens to the metal held at high temperature for a long period of time and is defined as the flow of plastic deformation as stresses that would otherwise have not caused the metal to flow if the temperature was low. It is based on at an elevated temperature and stress level. Terms and definition. Damage mechanisms are divided into the following groups, mechanical and metallurgical stresses, 
leading to failure, uniform or localized loss of thickness, high temperature corrosion, and environmental assisted corrosion. The following types of damage are encountered in petrochemical equipment, general and local metal loss due to corrosion and erosion, surface connected cracking, subsurface cracking, micro fissuring or micro weight formation, metallurgical changes. Stainless steel, there are four categories of stainless steel, austenitic, ferritic, martensitic, and duplex. These alloys have varying amount of chromium and other alloy elements that give them a resistance to oxidation and other forms of corrosion depending on the alloy content. Austenitic stainless steel is a 300 series, as you can see, 304, 304L, low carbon 304H, high carbon 309, 310, and etc. The L and H suffixes refer to control range of low and high carbon content, respectively. These alloys are char characterized by a austenitic structure. Duplex stainless steel are 22 series, 2205, 2304, or 25 series. That 22 is the amount of chromium, 25 as well. And they have an austenitic ferritic structure. Ferritic stainless steel includes four series, like 405, 409, 430, and martensitic stainless steel also are four series, such as 410, 410S. Nickel based alloys, a family of alloys containing nickel as major alloying elements. So it should be more than 30%. So this can be a potential exam question saying that what is the minimum percentage of nickel in nickel based alloys, which is 30%. Carbon steel, steels that do not have alloying elements intentionally added. However, there may be small amounts of elements permitted by a specification, such as SA516 and SA. 106. The abbreviation ethane, propane, butane, methane could be a potential exam question as well as naphthenic acid corrosion, NAC, and polyatonic acid stress corrosion, PASCC, which is caused due to ingress of moisture and oxygen. And then Stress-oriented hydrogen and wet fluorescent magnetic particle testing, these are the abbreviations. High strength low steel alloys, uh, they can be susceptible to hydrogen embrittlement, which is also called delayed cracking. So the hydrogen diffuses into this metal and because it's, there is no way to escape, so it keeps merging with other hydrogen atoms and it bubbles and then it bursts. Heat affected zone or HAZ, HAZ, is the portion of base metal adjacent to the weld which has not been melted, but the metallurgical microstructure and mechanical properties have been changed by the heat or welding, heat of welding, sometimes with undesirable effects. Normally, the HAZ region has got a higher hardness and they may be susceptible to brittle fracture. Many stress corrosion cracking happens at the HAZ region. Hydrogen-induced cracking. This is a stepwise internal cracks that connect adjacent hydrogen blisters on different planes in the metal because of internal pressure resulting from accumulation of hydrogen. This is one of the most widespread corrosion and failure. Low, low alloy steel, any, any alloy, less than 9% chromium. This could be a potential exam question. Like as you can see here, carbon half mole, mole molybdenum, one chrome, 1.25 chrome, two and a quarter chrome, five chrome, and nine chrome. So these are called low alloy steel if the chromium content is up to nine percent. And chromium is the principal element to uh, prevent corrosion by getting oxidized and working as a sacrificial anode and uh, saving the base metal. A stress-oriented hydrogen-induced cracking. This is the same as hydrogen-induced cracking, but under stress. 
So an array of cracks aligned nearly perpendicular to the stress that formed by the link up of a small HIC cracks in a steel. We commonly observe in the base metal adjacent to the heat affected zone of metal oriented in the through the thickness direction. 